Um, this allows other people who aren't here to still get a chance to kind of hear from our panelists and learn from them. So welcome to our virtual student panel, study abroad student panel. And we just saw the videos that we just saw. Thank you to Allie Ferry, if you're on, and also Joanna Kirkika for making those videos. We have some more videos coming from our recent trips this year. Um, to watch those videos again, they're up on our blog site and they'll be posted on our Facebook and Instagram. Well. Um, again, if you just joined us, if you want to go ahead and just hit your mute button as you come on. Um, just another quick snippet. This is about a minute of all of our seniors we're going to hear from and some other students. Quick little photos. <laughs> a little spotlight on our seniors. Um, some of our seniors, of course, there's several more that we didn't have the photos because when we do the student panel part, we're actually going to take away the screen and we're going to focus on seeing our seniors and our students um, that are on the panel here. So quick note before we get into our study abroad student panel, I just want to highlight our 2021 faculty led programs. These applications are up. They're available now. You can apply to them on Blackboard. Students that are graduating seniors, you can come back, find a reason to come back to GCU and, and be a student temporarily and join one of these programs. Let me know how you can do that um, to talk to me about, you know, coming back onto one of these programs. So we have three programs going out next year. Again, we are optimistic, you know, looking at optimism and looking at the optimistic idea that the world will be back to normal. Again, we'll reevaluate all these programs come October to make sure we can run them safely given the current situation. But I'd like to point them out. So Costa Rica is our January program that's run by Dr. Wooten and Professor Bailey, and it's focused on soccer, sloths, and sustainability. So it's going to be tropical ecology and also sports management and principles of sports marketing and looking at both of those and doing some kind of separate itinerary items, but then coming together for some fun itinerary items as well to see Costa Rica, live with homestay families, and that's in January. Um, again, that's Costa Rica, it's open to all students, all majors. So you don't need to be in those majors to go on those programs. Um, another January program is our trip to Ghana. This is specifically for nursing and exercise science students. It will be service learning as well. And this is a really critical hands-on experience where for five days you'll be volunteering and helping in rural communities in Ghana. Very similar to the program that you just saw with the video from Peru. Um, where you'll become a pop up medical clinic for people that don't have access to regular health care. And that's in January as well. That application is open. We already have 5 applicants for that. So I imagine that 1 will fill up rather quickly um, with uh, the targeted nursing and exercise students for that 1. Then we have a Japan program in May next year, and this is looking at Japanese spirituality and health through cultural immersion. It's run by our religious studies professor, Dr. Vento, and also by Dr. Komogata. Um, and from integrative health. So it's combining two different disciplines together. Again, open to all students, open to all majors. You don't need to be taking the courses, but there will be a course connection for those as well. Um, possibly spring connected courses and maybe summer option for course as well. So that's coming up next May, May 2021. Um, so Japan, Ghana, and Costa Rica, you've got three different continents on the map. Really exciting programs for 2021. So look out for those. Email me if you have any questions. And again, those applications are open now to apply to. 
Our spring events, if you have been following um, us, you've been seeing that we had some events last week. We had an information session on Ghana, an information session on Costa Rica, and we also had a unique um, kind of situation where if you want to apply for a globally based internship, but do it from your own home online this summer, there are programs available. You do, they're, they're paid programs, but you get course credit from them. And there's a lot that you get out of that. So if you're interested, paid in the sense that you have to pay for it, not paid in terms of receiving a stipend. Um, but if you're interested in that, the deadline for some of them is today, but some of the programs have a deadline of May 31st or June 6th. So if you wanna know more about what that's all about, I have videos on all these info sessions posted on the Facebook group. Um, and we'll talk more about that group in a moment, but Georgian Court University Global Alliance is the name of the group, but they're also posted on our Blackboard organization under Global Education, under that organization. So you can find those videos if you miss those info sessions there. But again, you can always email me to set up a time to talk more specifically as well. And then we have two upcoming events after today. Today's our big event, our big kind of highlight and farewell to our seniors. But also we have a study abroad scholarship workshop coming up in a couple of weeks for anyone thinking about specifically semester programs or summer for next year to talk about applying to those scholarships. Some of them open up in July, which is why it's um, critical to think ahead of time and apply for those early for the following year. And then we have a Japan info session that will happen on May 21st at two o'clock in Webex. So you can email me to RCP for either of those. All right, so moving along, our online events that we have been going on uh, if you've been following GCU underscore global on Instagram or Facebook, Georgian Court University Global Alliance, our Global Alliance eboard has been very active in trying to kind of run with the virtual world. And we have had every Wednesday a student, one of our international students has gone live um, to share with us about their home country, their hometown, what it's like to be an international student at GCU, what they love about GCU. So you can check out some of those videos on our Instagram and Facebook. Again, GCU underscore global for Instagram and then our Facebook page. And then on Feature Friday, we've had different spotlights on students who have studied abroad as well and shared their experiences. So you can go live and you know look back at those videos with them as well. So to talk about Global Alliance, um, I also just want to mention our eboard. They've been meeting every couple of weeks the past couple months um, while we've gone virtual. So they've been very active. And we want to spotlight, sadly, we have Four of our current eboard members are moving on. They are seniors. We have some students in the room right now too that I want to mention. We're former eboard. Um, so Dan Smoke is on the on in the room, and Brooke Stein, Brooke may be joining us at some point. She's a former eboard member as well, and some more. And Sally also is a former eboard um, Global Lines president. So thank you guys, former eboard members, for joining us. But our seniors that were really sad to see go um, that our current eboard members, Teresa, Dawn, Lily, and Nicole. So just a quick spotlight on them. And I'm gonna ask Landry, our current uh, Global Alliance president, just to say a few words and thanking them. Landry. Oh, maybe a little louder, Landry. Right now, is that better? Uh, a little bit louder, even more. Try again. Holding up like this. Yes. Yep. That helps. There we go. There we go. I mean, I'll be short and brief, anyways. Like, I was just going to take the opportunity to go a little bit deeper and extend um, a gratitude and honor for having Nicole, Lily, uh, Dawn, and Teresa as part of the eboard members. Like, it was honestly a, an honor to work with you. Like, Lily, you're amazing. So social, inspirational, hardworking, and um, I was going to say you should definitely start your own podcast because the way you're interviewing people on, on Instagram live, like I know Jamie would uh, testify for that, like it's honestly great, got people watching, got people interested. And uh, Teresa as well, like you obviously put in hard work, like you will be missed dearly in uh, the Global Lions. Like I remember for Valentine's Day, you made that little board thing, uh, gave out people hearts, so, like I've never gotten a better Valentine's gift, honestly. It was absolutely great. Uh, Nicole, like, always have a smile on your face. Like, it matches your bright personality. Always <sighs> committed to Global Lions. Like, honestly, you'll be missed as well greatly. And um, the club will miss you all. Dawn, your kids especially, they're wonderful. Babysat them. And I was crying as well when they were leaving, <laughs> as much as them. So uh, we're going to miss you all. And thank you very much for all the hard work and everything that you put in. Uh, your shoes will be difficult to, to build. Uh, 
just a short brief thank you. Thank you so much, Landry, and thank you for taking the leadership of this club. So we are going to be transitioning into a new eboard. Um, if anyone's interested in getting involved in that, email me. We are going to have kind of a pseudo elections and invite to our eboard meeting next Tuesday to kind of transition and find a new eboard. So if you're interested, do get in touch with us, any of the eboard members, before Tuesday of next week. But thank you to our seniors. We are going to miss you, and thank you, Landry, for that tribute. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you very much, guys. Thank you. So, um, as you all know, I mean, if you don't know, if you haven't been abroad, study abroad is transformative. It shifts perspectives. It's inspiring, motivating, humbling. It reminds us that we're part of an entire world. We have a lot to learn about, um, especially in these times. I think right now we're going through transitions. So, as borders are closing temporarily, we want to put that out there. It's temporary. The world is, and the world's isolating physically in that sense. It's more and more critical and crucial. Um, to really transcend those borders and bridge connections across cultures. This picture, picture of our international students once they landed back home, some of them that went back home and some of them still in the U.S. Um, and just kind of we gathered for a group shots. So it's kind of cool to see we had about 10 or 11 countries represented in this photo. So um, GCU is global. We've got our international students, but also students that go abroad, see the world, and then students that just care about the world. Um, so with our student panel today, we, when we were going to back in March, these students countries. They've since um, ended their programs, but we had students studying abroad this past spring semester in Spain, um, both Giovanni and Octav, two of our internationals from in, in Italy and France were abroad in Spain. Courtney got a chance to study in Scotland, and then Stephanie and Kayla were in Costa Rica, and there's a picture. Um, Kayla um, and Stephanie were in Costa Rica, and then Stephanie also had a chance to bring her dog Bella with her as well. So um, where you can find out more, you're gonna hear a lot from our students that have studied abroad today and a lot of their stories that they'll share. But if you wanna take kind of a deeper dive and really learn more about their experiences, their personal experiences, see some more videos, check out our blog site. So on our blog, we have videos posted, student reflections. And while they're on the student study abroad programs, especially the faculty led trips, there's kind of like a daily blog posted there as well. So check that out if you haven't yet. Um, Grace Breslin was not able to join us today. She's a senior graduating and I believe she had work conflict. So she did put together a quick little video. Um, it's about 50 seconds. So I'm going to start with her as our first kind of panelist to, to present her video to us. And then we'll begin with an introduction of our panelists that are on the call. Hey everyone, my name is Grace. I'm a senior at Georgian Court University and I went on the study abroad trip to Switzerland and it was an absolute amazing experience. I completely advocate for study abroad because it allows you to immerse yourself in different cultures, sceneries, um, you can try different foods and it really just opens up your mind to the international community that we have in the world. So um, if you get a chance, definitely do it. Um, stay safe, everybody. Okay. All right. Thank you, Grace. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to join us. So now I'm going to switch screens and I'm going to share on my computer. Um, if you go at the top, it's up to you how you want to view it. But I want to I want to view everyone who's in the room right now. So if you go up to the top corner and you hit the box that has multiple boxes, you'll be able to see grid view. And it's really cool because you can see your one of many people. <laughs> it's a really cool image to see because we've got a big group with us today. Um, so now I'd like to begin by introducing our panelists and we have a lot of panelists in the room. In fact, more than half of the people on the call might be uh, panelists because you've studied abroad. So excellent. So we are going to start with Jay over in Scotland. Jay's added a special request to go first because he is, um, it's evening time in, in Scotland. So it's Friday afternoon. He's got some family family fun coming up. So, so Jay, welcome from Scotland. And uh, if you could just introduce yourself, major, and you're studying abroad at GCU. So kind of, of what course, you yeah. highlight about so, studying abroad in New Jersey. Of course, yeah. Um, so my name is Jay. Jay, I'm from Scotland. Um, my major is in accounting and finance. I'm the vice president of the Global Alliance. Uh, so basically, I'll tell you a bit about Scotland to start off with. I know Someone else is probably going to be speaking about Scotland in here. So uh, Scotland, like I would say, it's quite an outdoorsy place. So it'd be somewhere you'd, you'd go if, if you like the outdoors. And um, there's like lots of like like outdoor like mountain biking, like hiking stuff like that. There's a lot of nice scenery, like a lot of like really really pretty mountains and stuff. Like that's more up in the north of Scotland. 
where I'm from, I'm, I'm in the south, so my, my town borders England. Uh, there's like, so from my town, there's like beaches, like walking trails, like mountain biking, forests, all, all within like 20 minutes of my house. So everything is quite central in my town. And uh, going on what Laura said there, uh, what I like about studying abroad is obviously I'm, I'm a, on the soccer team. So I like uh, the athletic side of things, the big part for me. But uh, I like the tight community group that GCU has to offer. Uh, universities here in Scotland, like they're a lot bigger. It's like 50, 60,000 like population. So you get like the, the opportunity to have like personal like, tuition with your teachers and stuff. Like, you know, you know most of the people on campus, which, which obviously helps. And uh, like, obviously it's easy to get involved in different communities and stuff. Like, like here, I'm part of the, the Global Alliance, obviously. Like, that was just easy enough for me to do. It's everyone's like really welcoming and stuff. Uh, like the different culture as well from being abroad uh, is really nice as well. Like you're constantly uh, like exploring new places and stuff like that. So I think that is a big positive. Just not knowing anything going in, like just completely starting a whole new life for yourself. Because obviously I didn't know I didn't know anybody in America before I came here. So I've started a completely new life. So. Which, which is really good because I've got obviously my life back home and my life out in America. So it, it, is, really, it is a really good balance for me. I do really enjoy it. Thank you, Jay. Um, does anyone have, since Jay's going to slip off the call here soon, does anyone have any questions for Jay about studying abroad at GCU from Scotland? Open it up for any questions. We'll do questions later as well, but anyone want to spotlight Jay with any questions? Great. Thank you, Jay, for joining. Um, we're going to turn it over. I know Landry also has another engagement coming up. So Landry, while you're not too far from Scotland, so we're going back over to that time zone next. So we'll work our time zone back this way. So um, Landry, you're over in Brighton in England. So can you tell us a little bit about what it's like for you studying abroad at GCU, um, kind of spotlights and anything you want to share about, about that? Can you hear me now? Okay, great. Um, I mean, one thing I can say about Brian, coming from the south, uh, the weather's definitely a lot better. So if you do come to the south of England, the beaches here is, are wonderful. Uh, maybe not as, you know, as different as uh, the beaches in New Jersey, but there is difference in like the food that you can get here, like fish and chips along the coast. Definitely like a delicacy here, you could say, and uh, a lot more as well. And you honestly have to come here to see it. Like there's, there's a huge difference in culture and, being able to come from here to America and seeing that um, I wouldn't have been able to understand how the difference are until I, I, until I did that. So it definitely is worth going out of your comfort zone and, and, and trying to explore those options because you want to know what you could find. And I have definitely found something different in America and it's, it's something I really enjoyed. So that's one thing I'd say. Thanks, Landry. And what do you love the most about GCU and New Jersey so far? Um, so far, oof, it's the people. Honestly, I feel like the people makes the place, and uh, the American people, as as different as they are, it's honestly it's a good difference. And I've grown to really, really feel comfortable there, and and uh, the culture that they have, I've really immersed myself in it. And uh, yeah, that's that's the main thing I love so far. Thank you. Any questions for for Landry? We'll again ask questions later with everyone to go through. Anyone want to ask Landry any questions? Question? Yes, go for it. Um, why? Why did you? Why did you choose Landry? Why did you choose to do global study in? Two questions. Why America? Why did you study outside of Britain in America? And why did you see it? Um, like I said, like you honestly have to go outside your comfort zone, and I feel like going to America for the first time and never really been before to study was something that was outside my comfort zone and it really uh, I knew that I you know I wanted to explore so it was worth it for me and I've loved it since and it was so uh, that's that was the first question what was the second one sorry well, how do you find out about GCU um I mean I kind of just put myself out there that's one thing to do put yourself out there and then whatever comes to you you just kind of like got to seize the opportunities and GCU was one of the opportunities that came towards me so I kind of tried to seize it like in high school uh, yeah as soon as I finish uh we call it college here funnily enough 
So as soon as I finished college here, I went to university, but yeah, university in America at 18. Very nice. It was, it was quite the leap, like the other side of the pond, but uh, it was worth it. Any other questions for Landry? Thank you, Landry. All right, so turning over, so Landry's our current president of Global Alliance. So if you do have any questions about Global Alliance, definitely um, get in touch with Landry, Jay, of course, vice president. So those are two continuing on eboard and we're gonna be gathering new eboard members. I'm gonna turn it over to former eboard members next. Um, so we'll spotlight Sally's on the call. So Sally is a former eboard president of Global Alliance. She's an education student. So she knew that this year she would have to kind of say, I can't do eboard because I'll be busy, busy with uh, student teaching. Um, so welcome, Sally. If you can tell us what your major, um, your, your current year, when you went abroad, where you went, what you did, is your first time going, a little bit about it. I love it. So I actually am graduating this year, so like in a few days. Um, I'm a math and education major, education K through six, so really with like the elementary school. I, I don't even remember what year it was. I want to say it was like 2017. I went abroad in the summer and it was my first time out of the country, first time on an airplane. I just like packed up and left and I went by myself, which like, I guess was like a little scary, but I'm like one of those people who like kind of thrives on that like a little bit of adrenaline. And I went and I landed in a country and I landed in Ecuador and I was like, all right, like I'm ready, I'll just do it. And I thought I was gonna teach the younger grades, elementary school, and they actually, I got there and they were like, we actually need you like in high school. And I'm like, all right, whatever, I came here to help, so I'll do it. And I got there and I was really overwhelmed at first because I don't really teach in a high school. And then I was there and I was in another country and their school systems are so different. They have like, part of their school is outside and although it's high school, they still have recess. And they actually go to school from one o'clock in the afternoon to six o'clock at night. And I had eight classes because I was traveling like from room to room. So it was really overwhelmed at first. But um, as like the days went on, I actually started to really like it and it was fun. And I actually got to like go out and do some things by myself. I went hiking in a few mountains because it's so high up. And so it was really cool. And we were talking about like pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. And I think I was truly as far out of my comfort zone as I could have been like in another country by myself and I had never done that ever. Um, I'm trying to think and I feel like it was so long ago and I, I'm dying to go back and do more things like that. I actually was going to take this whole year off after my student teaching and do more volunteer projects like that. I would go to different countries for a few weeks and teach. Um, but with everything going on, I really don't know if I'll be able to do that. So I am like applying for teaching jobs around here for now. But I'm hoping I do get to go back and do that again because it really was exciting. Thank you, Sally. So as you'll hear from people that are on the panel, you can study abroad for summer, you can volunteer abroad, you can go in January, you can do a whole semester abroad, you can do a faculty-led program abroad. So there's all different options. So what Sally did was volunteer in the for summer. Two weeks. In the two weeks. And anyone who have any questions about what that's like, because we'll hear from another volunteer as well. So she's never been abroad and she just hopped on a plane. <laughs> By myself. Any questions for Sally? And we'll come back for questions for everyone. I've got some general questions to have everyone answer as well, but anyone have specific questions for Sally? What was it like, Sally, um, like communicating? Did anyone speak English or was it mostly like you trying to learn Spanish? Like how was that adjustment? Well, um, I stayed with the family, which was nice, and they definitely spoke English. And I have a like, background in Spanish. I'm pretty okay, but when you go to a country that's like fluent in it, you're like, wow, I really am not that good. Um, but I did okay. I got my way around. I didn't realize going there, I have blonde hair and blue eyes, and it stuck out like a sore thumb. I had people on buses, like I would catch their eye. People would come up to me and be like, can I please get a picture of you? Can I please get a picture with you? And I had people who were like fascinated by my eyes. And so I think honestly, that was like a pretty big adjustment to make at first because you don't think anything of it. And then you go there and people are like, what do you see her? And it was pretty crazy at first, but it's just one of the things like I would get used to. Like people were like, are you from America? And I'm like, yeah, like, can I have your picture? And like, I was like, no, but it was, it was pretty crazy. 
But the cool. language part wasn't so bad. But you also speak Spanish, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I have I've taken Spanish probably since like middle school, so I can speak Spanish. Um, I'm definitely better at reading it than I am like hearing it and like responding to it, but I was able to get my way like through it. Like I said, because I stuck out a little bit, like people would see me and they'd be like, Oh, she must not speak Spanish that well. So that definitely helped me out. But I kept the like, the most important things in Spanish, you know, things that like I need. So that was good. That's awesome. Questions for Sally? Okay, we'll come back for more questions. Um, and going to another former eboard member um, who's also graduating this year. So Dan Smoke, if you'd like to share with us. So Dan said he brought for a full semester down under in Australia, pretty far away, the farthest you can go from here. Yeah, um, yeah. It was, I think it was a 16, 16 hour flight and we stopped um, we had multiple stops through Canada and then went down to Australia. Um, but yeah, I studied abroad for four months in Australia and um, I'm an exercise science major at GCU. Um, I am graduating, but it was, it was kind of a, a crazy experience um, to be there for so long. Um, Laura definitely went over um, how we were going to feel um, while we were out there. Like we we're gonna be super excited um, and then we're going to ride that for probably a month and then we're going to miss home and then we're going to forget about home. And then as soon as home like started to come closer, we would start to miss it again. Um, but as soon as I came back home, like I, I feel like I think of Australia like almost every day um, just because of how great of an experience it was to like see um, different types of lifestyles. Um, a popular quote that I heard while I was there was that um, Americans uh, live to work and Australians work to live. And I, I kind of really try and incorporate that quote into my daily living so that I can um, kind of remember that the point of life isn't to just work 24 seven, because that's a huge part of our culture, um, but it's also to lay back, relax and enjoy um, the company of others and, and the experiences. Um, I know in the email, um, she asked us to bring like a souvenir, but I, this is just from the, like, I think we all submitted like photos of our trips, but this is me holding a koala bear. And um, at the time it was super exciting, but then I was told um, afterwards that holding koala bears actually stresses them out um, and it shortens. Them. So it's kind of like outlaw in Australia, just a fun fact. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I think it definitely changed my life in terms of um, how I view everything. Um, it definitely makes me very lighthearted. It makes me realize that there's um, other types of cultures out there, other types of food, other types of personalities. Um, I think that's super important when you're trying to um, grow and expand. So do it. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. And maybe as I go, well, no, we'll come back around to questions. I, I got some questions for you guys, but well, any questions for Dan specifically about Australia? Um, were you like, what? I'm trying to think, like, because I'm trying to think, like, how, like, how, like, how was the experience of like when they dealt with like situations like. Like their fire and the coronavirus and stuff like that like how do you think like differ that differs to how like you know america responds to it and stuff like that well that's interesting i mean i was there my sophomore year of college so i'm not too too sure if i had to speculate though um did you say fires too like how they deal with yeah, when the australia was on fire at that one point that's you're right like, yeah yeah i mean so Australia has um, really good connections with other countries, um, especially, um, you know, Britain. Um, I think they definitely communicate a lot and especially with America. Um, so everyone was sending relief over there to help, um, to help out with the fires. But I think in regards to the coronavirus, I would say, just like every other country, they had to shut down their borders and 
it might be a little bit easier because they're, you know they're not attached to other countries um you know they're just their own huge island basically so um if i had to speculate that's probably what they ended up doing mm -hmm. Questions for Dan? Come back around. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. So um, stay on because we're going to have questions for everyone uh, with our, especially senior questions. I've got a couple questions about your futures and how that's impacted it. But we'll come back around. So um, next, I'd like to call on Olivia. I believe she had an event that's coming up at three. So I want to make sure that we get to hear from her before that. So Olivia went abroad um, not only once, but twice with GCU, as a couple of us on this, on this panel have as well. Um, so she went abroad two times with GCU. So if you want to talk about, your, I believe your first time was first time abroad as well. Is that right? Oh, your volume, you're muted. Sorry, sorry. Um, my mom's vacuuming and it's really loud. So I just was telling her to stop, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, my first time abroad ever was my junior year of college at GCU. I went to Spain with a group of four other girls and we went to Madrid for most, for all of our trip, we stayed in Madrid and it was focused on art and culture and language of Spain. And I am an elementary education major, but I also have a concentration in Spanish. So that was something that I was really looking forward to was actually being able to see um, Spanish being spoken in like a natural setting. So that was fascinating to me. Um, and I also <laughs> loved all of the art museums that we got to go to and all of the architecture was gorgeous. So that trip was extremely eye-opening and it was like the best trip ever for my first time out of the country. Um, the flight was only about seven hours, so it wasn't too bad. And then my second trip abroad was actually in January. Hold on one second. And in January of 2020, I went to South Africa and that was more of a volunteer trip, but it was also faculty led. Um, and it was focused on education, and especially special education, which is something that my major also focuses on. So that was really interesting. We got to volunteer. I don't want to talk. I, I know Nicole's also on the call, so I don't want to talk like too much about it. So I saved some for her to talk about. But um, basically, we volunteered in a school for about a week, and it was just the most. Um, it was just the most like life changing and impactful experience that I've had, probably in my whole life. And I'm just so grateful for those experiences to Georgian Court, and um, they were both. They were extremely different trips, Spain and South Africa, but I just cherish both of them so dearly. Thanks so much, Olivia. And I know you're busy as well with education, so it's great to have you on this panel. So does anyone have any questions for Olivia? Again, these are our faculty-led programs. So she took advantage of two of our different faculty-led programs in two different years. Um, and at first time jumping for all with, with GCU. Questions for Olivia? Hi, Olivia. Hey, Nicole. <laughs> um, on your on your first trip, was that also that wasn't that was that volunteer? Did you do some volunteer work in the other? Um... Um, it wasn't necessary. It wasn't really a volunteer trip. It was more just for the experience and we just studied mostly Spanish culture and it was also like an art focus. So that was fascinating. Um, hi, Dr. Samora. And then it also like Spanish language. So that one wasn't volunteer based, but um, just more experience and culture. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for Elena? And if you're just joining us, if you can just mute your microphone. Questions for Olivia? No? All right, let's go ahead to you. Let's go ahead and ask Nicole since Nicole was on the same program as Olivia this past January. And I believe, Nicole, too, this was your first time, first time abroad? No, you'd been abroad before, correct? Yes, that's correct. Hi. Um, yeah, I have been abroad before, but not in this capacity where I had to volunteer. So that's what's different about it. So just to piggyback off of, of, of Olivia. So 
Um, a little bit about myself. I am studying uh, to be a school, a school counselor and uh, in the education department. And I'm a graduate student, and that's uh, a little bit about me. Um, I really enjoyed my experience um, in South Africa. Um, the scenery, I didn't expect uh, Durban to be uh, so healy, so uh, full of you know, hills and everything. But it was a fun experience. Um, the, the it was, it's so diverse. Um, it was so easy to move through Durban because, you know, spoke English. Um, my understanding is that 16 uh, different languages spoke, spoken um, in South Africa. So it was great that you just, if you, if you wanted to try and practice Zulu, you could, but for the most part, everyone made you feel so comfortable and so welcome, and they were just so excited. It's so diverse of an experience, so much, so many different foods, just like you would here. And um, it was just a great experience. Um, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Got a chance to do, I mean, of course, you go to Africa, you got to go to the safari, got a chance to do a bit of that. And um, got a chance to experience some of the culture, the dancing, and everything that you know to be true. And also the museum experiences, um, experiencing um, how they are 25 years um, after, you know, after forming their new democracy, what that's like after apartheid. So all in all, I think we all um, had a great experience. Um, got a chance, as Olivia mentioned, to do the internship, or well, really. Uh, volunteer service um, at open air school, which was the first of their kind for special education students and um, all in all a great experience. So. Thank you, Nicole. Does anyone have any specific questions for Nicole about her time abroad this January in South Africa with GCU? I, I'm so sorry that I am late to your meeting. I have, I'm back to back meetings here so I can grab a few minutes. Olivia may have already mentioned this, so I'll put a question out to both Olivia and Nicole. Have you addressed um, the, the, uh, the children, the disabilities that you observed and the manner in which they were um, accommodated in the open air school? And I was wondering if not, can we just hear a little bit about that and your impressions? No, we didn't get a chance to talk about that. Um, I'll talk a little, I can talk a little bit about that. Nicole, feel free to jump in and cut me off whenever. Um, so the open air school is specialized for students with physical and cognitive disabilities, uh, specifically like severe physical disabilities that we don't normally see in a public school setting. Um, we worked with students who were amputees. We worked with students um, who were victims of shootings. We worked with students um, that were in wheelchairs, blind students. Um, that's something that we rarely see in public schools or students with severe visual impairments. Um, we also worked with students with just cognitive disabilities, um, cerebral palsy, I believe. And um, it was just so eye-opening and it was such a great experience because we most of us have never worked with a population that diverse. And that's an experience that we can take with us no matter where we end up working. Uh, I that uh, in seeing was that they accommodated everyone in the same class. So if you had, if you were blind, you weren't in another class, everyone would get um, pretty much no matter the, the grade level and to see how they uh, accommodate uh, certain students while they're still teaching the entire class. So it's like very inclusive of everyone um, and accommodating everyone's disabilities. So that is certainly unique. Um, even I don't think you would get that here. Agreed. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah, okay. Thank you both. And we'll come back around for more questions later if you want to just mute like your phones. And now we're going to turn it over um, to another faculty led program also focused on service learning. So Lily got a chance to volunteer. Uh, last year in 2019 Peru, we also had the 2020 Peru program. I'm looking on the con, I don't see anyone else from either Peru 2019 or 2020 um, programs. Nicole Kalowski was going to try to join, but she's working at the hospital. So if she joins, it'll just be like for five minutes on her work break, and we will kind of spotlight her in real quick because she'll be in the hospital working. So a lot of our nursing students 
are busy, um, of course, right now in the time, so they're not able to join us. But really, if you can talk about both the social work and nursing end of what that program was and what the program meant for you. Sure. Um, so in January 2019, I had the amazing opportunity to go to Peru for a little under two weeks. Um, for me, it was part of my uh, field work for social work. Um, I'm a social work student. I'm a senior. I'll be graduating in May, um, which just makes me more and more emotional every time that I seem to think about it. Um, also, side note, thank you to Landry for that lovely tribute. I don't know if he's still here, but if he rewatches this, I do want to say thank you that was very, very um, nice, but back to Peru. Um, so I had gone for two weeks. I and another social work student had uh, been working in child's care, uh, volunteering at a local orphanage with a very diverse age range of children. Um, so they were like bi-level homes that um, these families stayed in. Um, and for me, I was working with children from I limit like two to 17 um, and there were seven kids in the household. Um, and then the other student um, had like the same situation about about seven um, children that we were caring for, just helping them get through with their daily activities. If they had any homework um, or just, you know, having a little bit of fun, putting a little bit of sunshine into their day, you know, whatever, whatever they needed at the time we were there. Um, to address and then the nursing students had set up clinics in local areas. I believe it was four clinics to provide medical care, basic medical care um, to locals in the area. Um, and they saw they saw a couple hundred people like it was it was amazing how many people that they had seen in just the short time that we had been there. Um, so I think they were providing dental care, um, they were checking vitals, um, giving prescriptions if necessary, um, and doing basic assessments um, during checkup with the doctor. Um, so for me, it was just an amazing experience to see the culture um, and also to practice my Spanish. I'm also um, a Spanish student at Georgian Court. I had taken a lot of courses um, at my time at GCU um, to learn Spanish just because I think it's important within the social work profession to speak two languages. Um, cultural competence is huge in any profession that you go into, but I think especially when you're working with people. Um, so it was a good opportunity for me to really um, get out of my shell, you know, and see another place. And I mean, it was just so beautiful. The Culture of Peru blew my mind. Um, I would go back in a heartbeat. I didn't want to come back home. I cried and cried and cried. And I was like, I don't want to. I can't. Um, I don't want to leave. So for me, for me, it was definitely um, a life changing opportunity. And if you have the chance to do any service learning or volunteer abroad, I would 100% recommend it. It changes your whole perspective as a person and just opens your mind to the world. And I wouldn't exchange it for anything else that comes along the way. Thank you, Lily. Does anyone have questions for Lily about volunteering abroad? With GCU program. I know, Lily, you're going to another event soon after this, so I'll ask a question. What impact has, and this will be a question I'm going to ask a lot of you, especially the ones graduating soon. Um, what impact did the, your experience abroad have on your future in terms of thinking about careers or even like looking at that next career choice or even in the process of job hunting? Um, well, for me, I mean, I've wanted to um, pursue a social work career in immigration services. Um, so for me, this was a stepping stone to bolster my cultural competence as a professional. Um, but also I do hope to keep traveling, um, within the profession as well. I hope, I hope, I hope one day, you know, that I'll be able to work for an agency that allows me to travel. Um, I would love it if that were to happen. So for me, I mean, it's not only, you know, the resume builder, so to speak, you know, but it's just like having that value, um, like inside my mind's now, inside my heart now, you know, that's something that you can't take away, honestly. And just, it, it gives you a sense of 
well, one, what a small place you really do occupy in this world, you know, and, and a sense of community that, you know, should, you should know as, as a global citizen, but also I think it helps, you know, understand my sense of self, you know, and what I value, you know, when I was there, I mean, even, you know, just not having water for the whole entire day, like, it's just, it's a greater appreciation for the things that you have, you know, but also knowing what you really value in life like I think that's that's really important so it's it hits on all cylinders like I learned so much about myself you know and Peru while I was there and I'm really grateful that I could thanks so much Lily um Olivia I'm going to pass that question back to you as well just in case you do need to go to another event at three so what impact for you about your future career and what your what your job is going to be how how is this impact moving forward. And don't worry, those of you that I haven't gotten to, you're still on the panel. I'm coming your way. <laughs> I'm just start hitting back on some of our seniors real quick. Um, I think both trips have impacted my career choice and also like my direction with my career as well. Um, I think the first, obviously my Spain trip was focused on the Spanish language and that passion of mine persists. And that's something that I want to continue to um, after and hopefully may possibly teach this one day that might be in my future and then also like in South Africa I realized I had such a passion for working with students with special ed uh, with special needs because I always knew that I liked like working with both general ed and special ed settings um but I just didn't realize how much of a like how emotional of a connection you can create when you're working in a setting like that um and I was only there for like a week and the bond that I created with the, the faculty and the students there was incredible. So I think my passion for special education has definitely been ignited. Thank you to that trip. And they both just have like, I don't, I don't really know how to put it into words, but they've just both opened my eyes to so many different things and made me such an open-minded and well-rounded person, I think. And I, would love to possibly have the opportunity to teach in another country at some point in my life. So that's something that I hope to pursue as well. They both are um, so impactful in many, many, many different ways. Definitely in my career though. Thanks so much, Olivia. Yeah. Sally, did you want to add well in terms of your future, looking at uh, how it impacted your career? I know it was a couple years ago, but how that's made decisions for you. Yeah, so I know I've shared that I do plan on teaching abroad. I had wanted to go again right after I graduated, but with everything going on, it's kind of put me um, a few steps back, but it is something I am planning on doing, hopefully sooner rather than later when this whole thing gets cleared up, whether it's volunteering or actually like working for like a paid school and like living out there, it definitely is something that I want to do and I kind of have plans to do. Probably not for like my whole life, but definitely for like a year or two, I think it would be really fun. Thanks so much. Okay, so we're going around the room to a couple other people. Um, I'm going to call on Savannah next. Uh, Savannah volunteered two or volunteered, sorry, studied abroad two times with GCU, and I think she's looking into potentially going abroad a third time next year, even. So that might be hitting at. We may have some students that have hit three. Um, so Savannah, are you there with us? Yes, I am here. Hello. Hello. If you can share with us what programs you went on, was it your first time abroad, and what you did, and, and what you got out of it? I sure can. So I have been on two faculty-led study abroad trips with GCU. One to Madrid. I was one of the four other girls that Olivia was with on that trip. Hi, Olivia. Um, and the other trip was to Belgium, France and Germany, um, and that I went on with one of my close friends who was also here, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Um, and they were both just absolutely wonderful experiences. Um, the Madrid one was the one that I went on first. Uh, it was not actually my first time out of the country. I had been on a cruise previously, but it was my first time spending a, a week or so in a different country in the same country. Um, Madrid is the prettiest, one of the prettiest cities I have ever been and now I've been for. Um, the architecture is gorgeous. The fact that it's full of plants everywhere is gorgeous. The layout is so complicated and wonderful. It's like a maze, which is fun for me to navigate. Um, 
and the different towns we went to outside of the place were also gorgeous. It was all ancient architecture styles. It was beautiful. Um, I'm a nerd for architecture, sorry. <laughs> um, and Belgium, France, and Germany. We went to Paris, Munich, uh, Ypres, um, all of them also absolutely gorgeous cities. I had had my eyes on Paris for years, so finally getting to go there was literally a dream come true. Um, seeing the Eiffel Tower in person, the Arc du Triomphe in person, uh, was absolutely wonderful. Um, <laughs> going out to get some drinks with your uh, group mates in Paris at night, also a hell of a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> wandering through Paris a bit drunk at night, you know, probably not what we're supposed to be repping, but it was, it was a good time, you know. <laughs> um, it was, they're just some of the best experiences I've ever had. They made me so absolutely happy. I still dream of going back to each location. Um, I, I love, I love studying abroad. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if I'll be able to make the, the upcoming trip next year, considering everything that's happening, but I am going to try to maybe do a global internship online, which Laura mentioned earlier. So that could be really cool. Um, I would, I would absolutely recommend doing it. If you ever get the chance, you get to meet awesome people have fantastic experiences in beautiful new places you get to study art culture history uh just a lot of different things that you couldn't get from home um it's one thing to learn about each place from a textbook it's so completely different and so awesome to see them in person um, so if you get the chance do it so much, Savannah. Does anyone have any questions for Savannah about either one of her opportunities going abroad with GCU? All right, well, Savannah had inspired some friends to come abroad as well. So she was great at not only going abroad and repeat going abroad, but um, talking to her friends and really talking it up and inspiring others. So Rebecca's on the call as well. And Rebecca, I know. Um, came to me and said, well, my friend Savannah told me about it and, and here I am. So, um, Rebecca, if you can share a little bit about, hello, good to see you, uh, about your time going abroad. I believe this is your first time. For yeah, this is my first time going abroad ever. So, like, I, like, as the trip was coming up, like, I was getting a bit nervous because I never, because I was just like, oh, what if this happens? What if this happens? Like, all this anxiety was just like, what, what's going to happen? Like, I did look up like prior, like what to expect and like what languages are known, like what what's typically known around those places and what you should do, be aware of as uh, as a newcomer into those countries. But when we actually got on the plane, I actually felt really relaxed. And once we were in these countries, I felt very relaxed again. Like I obviously I was aware. I wasn't just like oh I was keeping on my things, but like I had like a wonderful time. Like everything, like what Savannah was saying, like everything was really beautiful there, and it was just a different experience than opposed to like what you've seen here and like in Jersey or in the U.S. Like it's a whole different experience. Where like if you are in Jersey or like wherever you live, like if you have a city and then you drive like several hours to like maybe a Farmville, but then like in Eper, which is like one of my favorite cities that we were in, like you. At the city, but then you also like after five, ten minutes, you're in planes, and it was honestly really nice. It was very like a different perspective, a different like different way of life, and getting to learn about the history behind the countries and the buildings, and and just learning about each and everything was wonderful, and even bonding with everyone else, like bonding more with Savannah because we didn't have this alone time before. And just um, having this experience was wonderful, and it definitely made me like very happy to be able to go on this trip and even like consider even going on a going abroad in the future because I want to do that at one point again, but also with my family so they can appreciate the beauty and the historicalness of these countries. Like, it's wonderful. Yeah. 
Um, you want to talk about bonding? Yeah, um, I just realized that that was the first time you and I had ever hung out on our own without our other friends. Um, that's pretty cool. The fact that we did that through a bunch of other countries. Um, We've had like alone hangouts before, but never like for that long. Yeah. And it was a nice. It was a nice experience. Um, you want to talk about bonding with our other classmates when we were in France on the D-Day beaches. Um, fun. We literally hunted for shells and rocks on we the beach shells in France. That. Like, how fun was that? <laughs> that was so much fun. Like, I, I that was also another like concern of mine. Like, I wasn't sure if like I would get along with the other members, other people, but besides Suzanne, but then, like, we were lucky enough to have, like, such compatible people to, like, hang out with and joke around with, like, play Uno and cards with, like, that, like, made the experience much more fun and memorable. Olivia, um, to, I wish you had seen me as I was with this group, because I was literally, like, the center of humor, um, it was it was very different. I wish I could have been that with you guys. I'm sorry I was so closed off on the Madrid trip, um, but I was not that on this other trip. So getting to have those experiences and getting close with the people that you're with on trips like this is just absolutely wonderful. Yeah, and like we still talk to our our Europe group too. Like we still talk to them like every so often. Like we, if they message me, like we'll message back. Be like, hey, how you doing? And it's like a nice little feeling. Or like we'll send them certain things that like oh this is this reminds me of you or whatever, and that's really nice. Thank you so much, Rebecca and Savannah, for sharing that. So and that is something that it's very unique as you're choosing programs, whether you're doing an individual program to volunteer or study abroad versus the GCU program. The difference with the GCU program, you get that bond right to go abroad with your classmates, get to know people you hadn't been abroad with before. So we're going to switch gears a little bit from our faculty-led programs for a moment. And um, I know, Elizabeth, you were on with video earlier. Are you still good to go? Um, I'm here. Okay, great. So Elizabeth volunteered abroad in Uganda. Um, she did this alone. First time abroad, she kind of went for the leap, like Sally was mentioning earlier as well, and just said, yep, I'm going my first time abroad, and I'm going to go to Uganda, and I might stop through Egypt on the way for a long layover. So <laughs> if you want to talk about going abroad for the first time and what you did in Uganda. Yeah, so I, like, growing up, I've always wanted to go on these, like, just some sort of mission trip with the church or with, like, like some random online volunteer group and my mom was like wait till you're in school wait till wait, wait till you're done with college wait till that wait till that and then finally I was just like you know what I'm just gonna bite the bullet and I'm gonna go like I'm in the nursing program already so I was in Uganda for two weeks uh, last July so almost a year ago now which is insane um there we well I'll start we had a 12 hour fl I went with my best friend we had a 12 hour flight to Egypt and then another 10 hour layover there so we went to go see the pyramids we took camels to the pyramids which was really fun and um and then we got on another flight um we flew to rwanda and then another hour up to uganda um, so it was a long long few days and then once we were there um we drove about an hour into like this really rural town um because I'm a nursing student, we, and so was my friend at the time, we were working in these small like health clinics. Um, it wasn't really what I expected. I was kind of expecting more of like a, a pop-up clinic type thing, but it was like this little established building with some, some rooms and they did malaria, well, we did malaria tests. We tested for HIV. We saw like patients giving them prescriptions um and there was also an ob clinic so there we delivered well helped deliver three babies which was really cool my friend got one of the babies named after her um and we got to of course do a safari because we were in africa um we did a tour of like the really big town in uganda um which was also awesome and I don't know. It was just, it was the best experience I could have ever asked for. We made some really good friends. I still talk to a bunch of them. 
Um, I think the only downside I had is the people I still connect with from Uganda reached back out to me and were asking me for money. And then, of course, like I felt guilty. And so I kind of had to like figure out how to weasel my way out of that. And so my my biggest recommendation is if you go to country countries like that, just be careful who you give your information to. So that's all I have. And I, I am going to Ghana in January. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, I kept rewatching the Ghana session over and over because I was so excited. <laughs> um, I definitely have to do some fundraising. Thanks, Elizabeth. And so, Elizabeth, how would you say your experience um, volunteering abroad in that summer has impacted you or has continued to impact you in terms of coming back into nursing, the nursing program, and like thinking about nursing in the future and any kind of work you've been doing since then? So, I I love seeing how different cultures, like different med like different cultures have different like ways of medicine. Um, and I've always wanted to keep traveling. So hopefully I can become a traveling nurse one day. Um, I just have to graduate first. <laughs> and did that give you more confidence coming back into doing clinicals and have you started? I wouldn't say it gave me more confidence. It just made me more excited. So drove more passion and like eagerness to get out there and do it. Yeah, exactly. Thanks so much. Any questions for Elizabeth? All right. I love the uh, the venture in the room. Just you know, Sally and Elizabeth never been on a plane or never been abroad before. For Sally, never been on a plane and just jumping abroad and going abroad on these programs to go volunteer abroad through providers that we use. So um, really awesome. Awesome experiences to come back and share. And Elizabeth also won our photo of the rhinos. I don't know if you have it nearby, but the, the rhinos. I don't have the photo on. I don't have my photo. Sorry. In the library. So when we're back in person, you guys, <laughs> the seniors come back and come visit us. You'll see those photos displayed as well. Um, all right. So we have more in the room. Don't worry. I'm still coming around. We're going to go to Dawn if she's good with her. Where is it? Dawn's area. Yeah. If she's good with video, we'll get Dawn on to talk about her experience. Um, and then we are still coming around to Teresa and Troy. So thank you guys for your patience. So Dawn did also a unique opportunity um, where she went and interned abroad. So she said, look, I'm looking for an internship and I think I wanna do this in another country, which is something that we don't have students do all the time, but it's an amazing opportunity. And Dawn took it, ran with it and has come back um, very successful with that experience. So thank you Dawn for joining us and she's graduating soon as well. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so last summer I went to London for six weeks and I got the opportunity to do an internship and took and I also study abroad. Um I did all that in six weeks. I it was very amazing that I was able to do all of that and successfully complete the program. Um so it was a very nice experience. At first, I was a little nervous because it was the first time um, ever doing an internship in the field that that I was that I am going to school for. So, like, I I knew like because my major is accounting, so like I I was studying accounting, so I know accounting from books, but I never had the opportunity to actually um, work uh, doing accounting. So, and especially at, uh, at another country, so I was very nervous about it. But once I got there, everybody was so friendly um, and very helpful. I, I was very lucky to be placed in a very nice um, internship at the Marion Hotel in their finance department. And um, think, uh, I, was, I had the opportunity to do a little bit of everything in the accounting field um and once i got there everybody was so friendly and they helped me a lot like if i had a question you know they were actually um giving me like a little training they would sit down with me and actually like go with me through the whole process and that actually made me feel very very comfortable uh, i wasn't nervous anymore and um i was able to write a nice paper about my experience, especially um, everything I, I had done in that internship. Um, and um, I, I successfully, successfully completed 
the program and they gave me the certificate of completion for um, at, the, um, at the hotel. And before I left, they gave me this too. And they also gave me a book of the hotel like they, it's like the story of the of the Marriott and they sign and they wrote a little little something for me everybody in that department were so nice um I'm, I'm never going to forget any of them um I have them in my Facebook we like talk here and there um I will never like I made friends for for life in London and I also made friends at the place where I was staying, um, people I was staying at home with, uh, people from Japan, Russia, and Brazil, and we still talk. We have a little chats in, uh, in in WhatsApp. So it was a very nice experience. I would definitely recommend to, uh, to do this. So if you if you have the opportunity, you, you should definitely do this. It's really nice to like be able to go to another country and learn the culture experience different food meet different uh, people from different countries and then have them as uh, so your friends for for forever and, and and on top of that you're coming back with with the experience in 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 the field you know that you're going to school for us for example me the internship and yeah i'm, I'm very happy definitely made an impact in my in my career um I want to put that in my resume, talk about it with um, with, a, with different employees and I'm, I'm in employers and um, they were very impressed. I'm never gonna forget the impression on her face, you know, when I was being interviewed. She actually asked me twice about my, my, my internship and it's really nice. It really made a big impact in my personal life and in my career life. Thank you, Don. Yeah, you said that that it was a huge investment you had mentioned, right, to go abroad because in, in terms of getting your future job and career, it gave you what you needed. Yes, yes. Um, at the beginning, I was so scared because I didn't know if I was going to be able to do something like that because, I mean, it's not my first time traveling because I'm from Peru. So when I came to America, it was different because, like, I knew I had a dream to, like, go to school, get an education. It wasn't easy. But now that I'm, like, I uh, finally have the opportunity, you know, to go to Georgian Core full time, be able to finally graduate, and then I have this opportunity to actually go to another country just to like in, to study for for six weeks and and work uh, at this huge company and have this wonderful experience. You know, it's 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 totally different, and and yes, I mean it. It, it was a big, it was a big investment. It was a very important investment that I have done for, for my, for me, for my career life. Um, and, uh, and it's definitely worth it because I can see now that it's paying off. And um, so thanks to that experience, um, I got the, the internship here in New Jersey. And I also have a job offer for after I graduate and in a, at a company that I, I really wanted to work for. And they were also very impressed with, with my resume, my experience, and I'm, I'm very happy. I, I am. Congratulations, Don. <laughs> Anyone have any questions for Don about interning abroad in London? I don't wanna say, I don't, not really a question, but just, a comment how I think it's wonderful that you, you know, accomplished all this. I'm so that's wonderful. And then, I mean, also that you have a family, you know, you did this also with a family and you did it. So you should be proud of yourself. Wonderful. <laughs> Great job. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> Thank you so much, Teresa. Yeah, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But when we really want to accomplish something in life, you know, it's it's not impossible. It's, it's it's very challenging, but not impossible. If you put your exactly. mind and your heart to whatever you want to accomplish in life, it happens. Good. Yeah. Yeah. To echo Teresa, I think that um, John, your motivation, determination, the whole process of doing it, because it had been kind of a new path, a new crossroads that I hadn't, you know, we hadn't had a lot of students intern abroad like that before. So 
um, I commend you for your determination through the whole process and just kind of drive and motivation like yep I'm gonna make this work and this is how to do it and and you just did it so calmly too so so great job on that because I know the visa process was not easy as well so there's a <laughs> steps involved in the whole process of getting over there and getting that up yes 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 <laughs> thank you um, and just we're gonna back. we are coming to Troy and Teresa um, and we're gonna slide back one if Dan smoke if you're still there um, we didn't get a chance to ask you a question about since you're a senior about to graduate Dan are you still with us I'm not sure Dan yes. all right so my question for you also as a senior is I know it was a couple of years ago that you went abroad um so it would have been my first actually my first week at GCU working at GCU it was your first it was about to be your your week of applying and getting That's right. it was a transition right almost about three years ago now so that was a while ago, but how did that experience for you now impact what you're looking at for your future in terms of your career, or kind of your future goals as well? How did study abroad affect that? Mm -hmm. um, I definitely um, knew what I wanted to do from kind of a young age. Like I wanted to be a physical therapist. Uh, I think, like I was talking about before, um, it just really helped me appreciate the profession that. I aspire to be in because um, they take weekends off and they have uh, really good hours um, in, in comparison to other healthcare um, uh, jobs. So I think it just helped me really appreciate what I was going into and um, kind of reiterated that resting mentality. Um, and it's, it's okay to take a step back and enjoy other things, um, so. Kind of like a holistic perspective outlook that that you're going to go about whatever you do in the future is what you're saying then. right yeah it just changed my way of thinking when it comes to pretty much everything that i encounter on a daily basis so okay. and i think that's like one of the best lessons that you can learn from a, from an experience so awesome thanks so much dan um and moving over to another student who did a semester abroad uh, troy is on the line so troy studied abroad in greece if you have video feel free to share troy if you're able to um, so Troy, well, he studied abroad in Greece this past fall, so fall of 2019. Um, and there's Troy. Hello, Troy. Um, so welcome. If you can tell us a little bit about your major, you know, where you went, what that experience was like, and how it's impacted you. I'm a history major and social work minor. Um, what was the other questions again? And how do, I, how do you want me to explain it? Where'd you go? Why did you study abroad? You went for the whole semester? What did you get out of it? Um, so even like for the past four years, um, I've wanted to study abroad, but like I never really like committed to it. Um, as like, I had always come into your room and be like, yeah, I want to study abroad. And you're like, where do you want to go? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> but, um, you know, like after like going into my junior year, I was like, all right, like, I know, like, I have to do this. And I knew, like, all right, I won't have the money going into the next, like, the spring semester of spring. So I was like, all right, let me make sure that, like, you know, I save as much money as possible, like, beforehand, because, like, I knew I wanted to do it. So um, I said, you know, my, my senior year, I'm going into the fall semester, and I'm just going to do it. Like, this has to be it. Like, so I ended up going to Greece. Um, I went to, it's the second biggest city in Greece, uh, Thessaloniki, and it was, hands down, it was gorgeous, and I was very fortunate to where we, like, we stayed, <clears throat> like the other study abroad kids. It was me and, uh, a girl, Soini, who, um, <clears throat> I don't think she's in here, right? Yeah, no. Um, she was all, she also goes to GCU as well. And we were the only two that went. And I don't know, has anyone else been to Greece before us? I think you're the first one to go for a full semester to that program. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so at least for the full semester, and it was amazing. Um, um, oh, yeah, so like I was very fortunate, like where I was, I was on the top floor uh, in an apartment building. Um, I had a, another study abroad kid. He was from New York, but he went to. Um, American University, which is a, a very amazing school in itself. Um, but we had the view of the, the sea and 
mountains. So in the morning, you get to see the sunrise. And at night, you just see the sunset right on the mountains of uh, Mount Olympus, which was hands down amazing. Um, but like what I'm really gonna miss is just like people and like I like I still message all of them like, like once in a while here and there, like not like obviously too excessive, but just to keep in touch and see how everything's going, especially during this pandemic. And actually, fun fact is that Greece is opening back up at least within like the country um, in like a week, I believe. So that's going to be quite interesting and how like the death toll, like it just completely stopped. And like the people that are getting sick, uh, there's just less and less people uh, coming in and out of the hospitals now. So that's why they're like opening up, which is pretty cool to know. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's try to enjoy like every moment that I had because I don't know when I'll have this much free time to you know, be able to express and, you know, see the world for how it is. So, um, what else? So, well, it's very well connected. You know what's going on there, how they're handling things. So you're you're kind of very connected. Your your heart's still there. It sounds like it wasn't yeah. that for you. So also looking forward in terms of future, how do you think this has impacted you in terms of how you see you know future decisions, career, personal path, and all that? Well, the big thing is is just how we live in America and how they live is totally different, and like they pretty much. Like as the quote that um, Dan said, you like work to live or like you live to work. So like that's literally like for Greece as well. Cause like, yes, people work here and there but only after the age of 18, but they still like enjoy their nights, you know, go out during the week or it could be the weekend, doesn't matter. They're still enjoying every moment, especially with the fact with like, with everything going on, especially with your economy. And, you know, you look at them and you're like, oh, how can they just go out and have fun? But like, it's, I guess it's the mentality of accepting, you know, we can only do so much and we can only control what we can control and just live in the moment and enjoy everything that comes your way because you don't know when you'll ever get that again. So I'm like, when it comes to jobs here, like I'm, prefer like I'm, I want to go towards the social work aspect. So I want to go for my master's and then work my way through it. Um, but like I'm more of a hands-on person. So I like to talk to people, be vocal and like, you know, be hands-on, just understand them on like a personal level. So um, I don't know, I'm just like, I'm always in the moment and just put myself in their shoes because like that was like a big thing when I went to Greece where I had to change everything that I like kind of knew and just, you know, be integrated and try to live the best Greek life that I could. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so at least that's what I'm going to do in that aspect of, uh, you know, moving on towards the future. Um, you're still missing it oh yeah oh, yeah um i would love to go back but um like if anything if i do go back i want to see more of the islands um i didn't have much time to do that because i was always traveling like either every week or every other week I either went to another city like up north like towards macedonia um or like I went to another country. So I want to maybe explore like south of Greece. So in like the islands. So yeah, that's what I want to do. To clarify, you were studying as well. Because you mentioned that you were traveling all the time. You were also studying. Oh, uh, well, yeah. So uh, see, it's it's really different because they have, um, I forgot what terminology that they use, but it's, School starts at 10 
and depending on the schedule that you had, you can go until class until like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. Um, so like for me, the latest class that I had was my sailing class. And that was from, um, from five to nine. So you're like literally on the water every single, like every single day, twice a week. And like, yes, it can be very exhausting, you know, just, you know, being, I guess, in class for so long. But once you're right on the water, like there's like there's not much like breeze or like cold air hitting you, which was like obviously the good part. But like, all right, it can, can it can get a little chilly once you like the boat starts like moving because we're on a sailboat. We're learning like um, all the different functions, the ropes, how to you know navigate um, to you know what the weather's going to be like in the next, you know, three to four days, um, you know, how to get from A to B and then B to D. It, um, it's just a lot of stuff that we looked at and it honestly changed my perspective when it comes to, you know, what the weather's going to be like today or, you know, the day like tomorrow or something like that. So um, that definitely changed a lot of like my perspective on life itself so, and things around me. Thanks for Troy. Wait, uh, sit again. Just asking to see if anyone in the room has any questions for Troy. I know Anna has been jealous and eager to get to Greece and Italy. Any questions from anyone? Yeah. So. Cool. Thank you so much, Troy. Thank you. And finally, but not last but not least at all, um, Teresa, thank you for being patient. So Teresa joined uh, two of our programs. So she actually went abroad first on her own, uh, going abroad to Florence, and she'll tell us about that study abroad, and then joined another GCU faculty-led program this year. So Teresa, thank you. If you can tell us a little bit about where you went, when you went, um, first, if it was first time, and, and everything that got you abroad. You're muted, Teresa. Uh, yes, my first time studying abroad, and um, it was I, yeah, it was in Flor in Florence, uh, July, the month of July for the, uh, during the summer. It was great, uh, wonderful experience. I had taken a social psychology course, and that was towards my major, which is psychology. Uh, I do graduate uh, this year in a couple of weeks, <laughs> um, and. Just the whole experience. I mean, the 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 museums, the cathedrals, the the people. Learning about the culture uh, was opened up your eyes and to expanded my my knowledge on all that. I mean, cultural awareness for sure, and it just makes me want to learn more about other cultures. That's that's what it was. That was just the beginning, and. I had the opportunity to travel to Rome and Pompeii and Tuscany and the Amalfi Coast and uh, Fano. Uh, those are just some towns I got to visit. Uh, and the food, spectacular in each place. I, my little, my little things that I've saved, of course, my little um, uh, Italian cooking lessons that I had taken and from school. My favorite little thing is my sweatshirt from Lorenzo de Medici. Uh, so I can wear that proudly from the university I attended in Florence. And um, the friends that I've made, that, that I know Dawn was saying that too. It's just like, and I think Savannah too, the bond you make, the friends you make, they'll just last a lifetime. And um, so that experience, you, it's, just, it's amazing. Yeah. And again, it just leads to the next, the next thing. Like, okay, well now I, I went to Florence and was there. Now I wanna go back and I wanna do more. I wanna experience more, so. Or you yeah. talk about Switzerland. Florence really inspired you with your cooking as well, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I've been spending a lot of time, since I got home, it was like, yes, I wanna make this and I wanna try this and, and share all these 
great recipes and with other people and family and friends and stuff. So, and now on this being home, I've been cooking and baking even more <laughs> at the time. So yeah, it's really a lot of fun, really a lot of fun. I enjoy that. <laughs> and so you did the, she, so Tressa went abroad, studied abroad in the summer on her own with this program that we partner with. Um, but then you also joined a faculty led program and I don't see anyone else had a chance to talk about it yet. So can you tell us about the Switzerland program this spring break, just a little over a month ago or two months? <laughs> yeah, it went fast, huh? It was, um, yeah, we went to Switzerland and that was about 10 days. During our spring break, we went to Geneva, Zurich, um, traveled on the train everywhere to every little city for different museums. And the, the, the theme was from Frankenstein. We read the book Frankenstein from Mary Shelley and we visited uh, different locations where Mary Shelley was writing, writing uh, that story and how it became about. So we were able to uh, visit certain museums and um, Oh, yes, I did put a picture. Hold on, I want to put it up because I think it's really cool. We, they do have a, oh, they do have a statue in Switzerland of Frankenstein in like this little park, which I thought was really wild. Um, and we did go to see it. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I had it up and it just like disappeared, but it was really, it was amazing. And um, again, going with the group of, I think it was like 10 of us, uh, you know, people that I, I didn't know anyone on, um, I mean, besides some of the professors, but I didn't know any of the other students and built friendships from that. And it was really a lot of fun as well. <laughs> Let me see if I get that picture. Oh yeah. Let's see if I can get it. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm gonna. Yeah, we we'll see that. That's me with Frankenstein <laughs> in the park. It was great. It was great. I mean, it was it was so much fun. I mean, and then Dr. Field had um, had some friends. She had friends there, and she we went to their home for dinner, and that was a wonderful experience as well. They welcomed us into their home, and and just made us feel so welcome. It was really wonderful. And oh yeah, did bring home lots of chocolate. I still have a lot of chocolate left. <laughs> good, for, good for these days, <laughs> impressed that it's still there now and yeah. as a graduating senior as well what impact have these experiences had on you in terms of thinking about your future and your future decisions career goals and all that um well it led me to a lot of different things but i mean i i definitely felt i wanted to go back to another country and either teach english or uh or stay with my psychology going with my psychology and staying with like clinical mental health counseling is what, what I'd like to go for my graduate degree. And um, that was really to support people and help them now. I mean, even now with supporting them through and through facing mental challenge, mental challenges and um, being able to offer them coping strategies and things like that. So I just wanted to be able to pursue that for now. So my master's first, and then we'll see in between what happens. Thank you, Teresa. Are there questions for Teresa about either one of her programs? Can I share? Oh, there we go. Hi, Teresa. Oh, no. oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Okay, Savannah first, then we'll do a demo. Um, sorry. Um, it's not really a question so much as a comment. Um, you said you were in Florence and got to see Rome and Pompeii and cathedrals and art and study culture. That is the next trip that I have, the <laughs> next type of trip that I have my heart set on. Miss um, Grodewald, if GCU ever runs a trip like that for a faculty led, <laughs> um, email me in a heartbeat. I'm there. <laughs> I'm there. Even if I'll, I'll have graduated by then, because I was hoping that something like that would pop up next year, but it's not going to. Um, Email me if that ever comes up. I'll, I'll do it after graduation if I can. Um, I would absolutely love to do that type of trip. Yeah. And you know what's, oh, can Teresa, I... you can do, and Tress can tell you about, like you can go just on your own there with this um, seven program. I think they've got some January programs and definitely summer as well. So 
Right. So trust yeah. that with the program that we partner with. Yeah, I mean, I just want to mention too, like, you know, people say, oh, how many churches can you go see? How many cathedrals? But each one is so spectacular. <laughs> Everyone you walk into, you like, you, your mouth is open, your jaw drops. You're just like, wow, like, look at this. And these are, I mean, these are historic, you know, these are thousands of years old, you know, and these are restored and they're so beautiful. And you're just like, oh, they just take your breath away, so. 100% agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, they are all unique and all gorgeous in their own right. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even religious, and yet I love them so, so <laughs> absolutely much. They're just beautiful. Yeah. They're absolutely beautiful places. Thank you. And John, you had a question for Teresa as well. <laughs> I wanted to uh, quick ask her if, um, if she had the opportunity to go back to Switzerland or uh, Italy, which one would you pick? Oh, do you know, people have asked that. Like, I think we had that on our little uh, feature Friday too. And I was like, that. I said, it was hard to, hard to pick between the two because they were both great, great, had fun in both of them. Um, a lot more people I felt spoke English in Switzerland. It, will, it was a little easier to communicate with many, I thought. Um, but I know that I couldn't, I couldn't really decide. I mean, I know I want to go back to Italy because there are other, like, I want to go back to um, some towns where, uh, where my grandfather was born was in Calabria, which I have not had the opportunity to go there. I'd like to go, I would like to go there, but I would definitely go back to either one <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Any other questions for Teresa or for anyone that's on our panel still? So still we have Savannah, Rebecca, Dan, and Dawn on the call. Uh, and Nicole is still on the call as well. And if anyone is there and, and wants to share their video for our final farewell, just so we see who's been in the room, because um, it's kind of strange in our virtual world when we see only initials, but if you're, if you're busy and otherwise occupied and don't, can't share your video, no problem. Um, so we're just gonna kind of farewell any, any final comments or anyone wanna share one, one last word or tip or why study abroad or anyone that's gonna be tuning into this video later. Oh, well, I, want, I wanted to say uh, one final word, if I may, that I really enjoyed listening to everyone's experiences and uh, really, I really got an education. Um, and it's, and I think one, I think it was Teresa who said, I mean, I can't remember which one who said it, that, I mean, once you start um, traveling, it's like, once you do it, you have to keep doing it and doing it again. And for me, it's, it's, it's just a matter of just saying, okay, I'm going to plan for this, do it. And um, I'm a little bit more like say yes, and then figure out how I'm going to come up with the money. <laughs> but, um, you know, other than that, I really enjoyed this experience, listening to everyone. And I'm um, hoping I can get around to some of the other places. I mean, Italy and everywhere else. I mean, I'm just, I'm so excited. And I have, and I just started um, in this last summer. So I still have some time to go to try and see if I can get, um, get on, get, get to go abroad again. So thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Anyone else want to add a final comment or question? And again, those of you still with us, if you want to share a video, feel free. Um, I just, um, well, this is my last semester and I'm graduating and I wanted to say thank you uh, so much, Laura, for everything. Um, before I even like started all the process, like I, I never even thought that I was going to be able to do something like that until you start explaining to me the possibilities and yes, and I started to to picture myself traveling and doing this and that. Uh, I thought it was for me it was something very very impossible. It wasn't I wasn't even thinking about it because I I thought it was something really hard to do. And I did it. And thank you so much. You're welcome. You did a wonderful job. And thanks for coming back and, and being part of Lions. And we're going to miss you terribly. So. Figured out how to show my video. <laughs> There's Savannah. There we go. It's popping up. Can you see me? We can see you, but it's dark. So I think it is. Uh, oh. oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> OK, that's weird. Um, all right, then I guess it's not going to work.
This is me trying it on my phone, and it's just not having it. I think it's just All the right, light. Sorry. Light on. We can see you. <laughs> my light is on. My oh, room light is totally on. I guess yeah. it's just not going to work. I'm sorry. That's okay. okay. That works. Um, I tried. <laughs> um, these the, the two trips that I went on were some of the best experiences I've had in my life. Um, I may have already said that, but I would absolutely recommend going on one if you haven't and you get the chance to. Like, there's just nothing like it. Um, getting to see any new interesting place like that in a different country and getting to do it with others or on your own, seeing places, learning history, cultures, it's art, history, whatever. It's all just so absolutely wonderful. Um, and hearing everyone's stories about their trips makes me want to go on several more right now. Um, granted, that would be impossible at the moment, but I want to. <laughs> so much. They were so much fun. Thank you, Savannah. Anyone else? Final comments or questions? Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to our seniors. We are going to really miss you. I am sad that I'm really sad that this is our like farewell to you. Obviously, we're going to see you in your virtual celebration. But as we're talking, I'm like, oh, no, we won't see a lot of these faces. So please do when we open back up and everything comes back to normal, come back to campus. If you're a senior, um, we want to see you back. You're always a global lion. You know, you're always a lion, but you're always a global lion. So if you didn't uh, get your shirts, we got plenty of these. Just let me know. I can get you. Global Alliance t-shirt and uh, we want to see you guys in person coming to events, you know, being, we might be doing more of these and especially I'm thinking as we're doing this virtual world and how easy it is. I'm thinking alumni panel next year at some point. So we'll be hearing from a lot of you guys um, that are graduating again, but best of luck to our seniors in the room. Um, everyone stay safe, stay healthy. Um, and if you have any other final comments.